will soon find out, won't we? said Snape smoothly. Wand out, Potter. Harry moved into his usual position, facing Snape with the desk between them. His heart was pumping fast with anger at Cho and anxiety about how much Snape was about to extract from his mind. On the count of three, then, said Snape lazily. One, two. Snape's office door banged open and Draco Malfoy sped in. Professor Snape, sir. Oh, sorry. Malfoy was looking at Snape and Harry in some surprise. It's all right, Draco, said Snape, lowering his wand. Potter is here for a little remedial potions. Harry had not seen Malfoy look so gleeful since Umbridge had turned up to inspect Hagrid. I didn't know, he said, leering at Harry, who knew his face was burning. He would have given a great deal to be able to shout the truth at Malfoy, or even better, to hit him with a good curse. Well, Draco, what is it? asked Snape. It's Professor Umbridge, sir. She needs your help, said Malfoy. They found Montague, sir. He's turned up jammed inside a toilet on the fourth floor. How did he get in there? demanded Snape. I don't know, sir. He's a bit confused. Very well, very well. Potter, said Snape, we shall resume this lesson tomorrow evening. He turned and swept from his office. Malfoy mouthed, remedial potions, at Harry behind Snape's back before following him. Seething. Harry replaced his wand inside his robes and made to leave the room. At least he had 24 more hours in which to practice. He knew he ought to feel grateful for the narrow escape, though it was hard that it came at the expense of Malfoy telling the whole school that he needed remedial potions. He was at the office door when he saw it. A patch of shivering light dancing on the doorframe. He stopped and stood looking at it reminded of something.